Welcome to Subramani. If you are an investor, you really can't avoid the noise. And noise comes from the sanest of people trying to guess uh, which sector will do well now. Is it a uh, time to be buying? Is it a time to be selling? And the uh, newsletters. I last time I saw that the newsletter business is upwards of five billion US dollars. Now, if you are really an investor, you should be making money investing, not by uh, managing uh, other people's money. And if you see the biggest fortunes have been made by managing other people's money, even in India and even abroad. Uh, Ken Fisher has made more money managing money than uh, his own money growing, right? So largely, it is the investment management teams which uh, make money and make tremendous amount of money. They are in the Forbes list which gets people to write books like uh, where are the customers yachts now not getting into that but i'm saying so much of your mental energy spent on looking at tops and bottoms is a complete waste so forgetting the survivor bias just go and pick up any of uh, the good companies which are there today which were there 30 years ago and see what would have happened if you had bought uh, one share, two shares, five shares as per your capacity on a monthly basis. Of course, it would have worked. However, this is a uh, problem of survivorship bias because you would have also put money in shares like Bombay Dying, you would have put money in Century, you would have put money in uh, uh, Pill, Mafatlal Industries, uh, right? Many of those companies, of course, Nirlon, which is currently got a lot of land. but Maybe there are companies which are forgotten, companies like RK which have fallen by the wayside. Yes, you would have lost some money there. So where would this have worked? This would have worked in an index. But then uh, talking about the index makes no sense because in 1979 there was no index, right? So instead of wasting so much time on and energy on seeing the tops and bottoms and what will work. For example, I recently bought two shares at an absolute bottom. I paid 110 rupees for EID Perry and I paid 318 rupees for Sun Pharma. Absolute bottom. I could it couldn't have got better than that. However, when I bought EID Perry at 110, I was very clear that at about 170, 180, I get rid of it because I have enough of it originally in my uh, investment. This was a trading call and I knew I would not get the top here because I did not want to hold on to the top. Now, having said that, sometimes it happens that you sell a share and then it falls and it never reaches that price again. It has happened to me in the past, but in the same share to get the bottom and the top always doesn't happen. So in a year, if you end up doing maybe 50, 60 transactions, one or two transactions or maybe five transactions, you would have got some share at the bottom and you would have sold halfway through the journey. Some shares you would have sold at the top and then you would have seen it uh, completely fall. Right, both these you will see, but don't even worry about that. Just put an X amount on a company which you are confident. For example, if you are confident of say JFC Limited or uh, Wipro or Infosys or uh, what have you, and you start putting an X amount every month, say 100 rupees a month doesn't work in these kind of things, so maybe 10,000 rupees a month into that script and keep reinvesting the dividend and see over 30 years, 40 years what happens, right? Of course, you're alive, you're active, you're watching. So suddenly you feel there is some controversy in that company, the promoters are fighting or things like that. Completely get out because the cockroach never comes out alone. There will be a lot of other cockroaches waiting to come out. So in case you hear some uh, traumatic, dramatic news like this, you get out. If you don't hear anything like this, but you hear that, oh, uh, software is falling and things like that, then you be careful and pare down a little if you need to. Otherwise, there is no need to worry about all those things. Don't, you look at your goals, you look at your investment, keep investing regularly, maybe over a portfolio of 5, 10, 15 shares and that's it. Your wealth is created. However, identifying those 10, 15 companies is not easy, especially if you are looking beyond the uh, Sensex and uh, maybe, but I don't think as a retail investor, if you're trying to pick stocks, looking beyond the top 200 makes no sense at all, unless you have some very specific advantage of knowing that company, knowing the analyst 
and knowing that the analyst's first port of call will be you when he is uh, putting out a sell report. Well, Indian analysts don't put out a sell report, but about that we will talk uh, separately. First of all, realize that you need not pick up the top and the bottom as long as you put 10,000 rupees every month for the next, uh, say, 5 years into one share. Right? Or you create a portfolio of 5 shares and you say, I will put 10,000 each. So you are putting 50,000 every year, which is 6 lakhs into 5 years. So 30 lakhs is what you are investing in a group of 5-6 shares. Just keep doing it. Unless you have dramatically different information. So what you realize over a period of time that uh, just leaving your money there with one company over 25, 30, 40 years creates a lot of wealth. And if these are dividend paying companies, they are rewarding you for all the sitting that you are doing. Make sure that you take the dividend and buy more of the same share. It is as simple as that. You will create a nice dividend uh, oriented portfolio. And uh, you will also realize that when people say time spent in the market is more important, it is true. You will obviously hear people saying, oh, once I thought time was important, timing is not uh, important. But now I realize that timing is important. It just means you have a weak heart and you have no ability to understand what's happening in the market. Of course, timing is important for traders, provided they learn trading under somebody or with books and with theory. And if you are just buying and selling because you think you are a trader, well, you are a loser. You are going to make money for your broker and not for yourself. So time, I mean, in the compounding formula also, you see the value of time. And those who are always looking to sell at bottom and uh, or uh, yeah, uh, buy at bottom and sell at top are wasting a lot of their energy thinking that this can happen. Do an analysis, try finding out what would have happened if you had invested in NTFC every week. Uh, since 1990 and uh, you bought create two excel tables one of you buying at the top and one of you buying at the bottom and in both the cases reinvesting the dividend honestly honest to god it wouldn't have made any difference whether you bought at top whether you bought a bottom or you just bought at random if you bought every day uh, or every month worth 10,000 rupees obviously scale down the amount make it 1,000 rupees if you are starting in 1980 Every month, if you have been putting that amount, just see what is the kind of return that you would have got. And it was not very difficult to pick up those shares. It was difficult to maybe sit tight doing nothing. Because at every point you felt, oh, now it's over. Now the growth is over and things like that. Right now I feel that the mortgage growth is over. But then there may be other assets which uh, are making that share uh, attractive. So that really doesn't matter. It is just an edge in investing. Uh, another, believe it or not, a top fund manager is uh, envious when he looks at me and says, you're lucky, you can sit tight on a portfolio. Honest to God, I'm not joking. And he's a top guy, I don't want to name him. Which is true because it allows me to sit on shares like LMW right through the journey from maybe 200 rupees uh, effectively to about 9000 rupees, right? And uh, I don't, maybe it gone through one bonus, unlike MRF, it didn't go through a bonus or a split. So it allows you to sit over 30, 40 years. No fund manager can sit. He will have to justify regularly. His uh, analyst will ask him, his uh, investors will ask him, and then his investors will turn on him and say, just to hold on to the share, why should we pay you MC charges? So therefore, you will need action. Fund managers need action. You don't. So you have the huge, huge unfair advantage over the fund manager. So you have that edge, you use it and if in case of rising dividends you are pouring more money back into it, you will sell only when you have a goal, right? So my father had a goal that he would remove money from selling some of his uh, nice shares like Colgate uh, at the time of my sister's wedding. But luckily some other cash was available and therefore we didn't need to sell the portfolio. So sometimes your goal comes and goal goes without you having to disturb the assets which uh, you had created just for the particular event. It just happens that you had some other fixed deposits or some place of property or something which you sold and you did not sell equity and so another 30 years of compounding was added to my dad's portfolio because he did not have to sell a share which he was holding on for maybe 12-13 years. So 13 plus 30, that those shares are now worth 40 years investing in my uh, mother's portfolio, right? So these things happen, you have to hold on, you have to take the dividend, reinvest it, 
make sure that you uh, have your goals met from removing some money from the corpus but otherwise the corpus remains untouched over long periods of time right now i think i have enough dividend income to live for the rest of my life whatever 30 years and uh, or 25 years uh, and therefore my corpus should remain untouched except for uh, some uh, earth shaking events or something goes wrong or things like that so there could be reallocation in your portfolio but there need not be any disturbance to the compounding process so time spent in the market is important you have to buy right and you have to monitor and sit tight over long periods of time when i say monitor make sure that you're not allowing the media to disturb you into saying oh god the world is coming to an end kind of situation or say oh it's so euphoric that i don't think prices can come down again right both these are extremes both don't happen you know when the market goes up one day it will come down it does not mean that every time it goes up it has to come down over long periods of time if you see 1979 at 100 and today at uh, close to 40000 it means 400 times of compounding has happened right and if you add the dividend then it becomes 600000 or uh, yeah uh, 60000 of uh, the sensex so which means your 100 has become 60000 which means 600 times is what it has happened so if that is what is happening with your portfolio for doing nothing it can't be too bad right but make sure that if you are in etfs uh, you will not get any dividend but you have to keep on adding more money to it because you are capable of saving more and more per month thank you